Hi, welcome to the Impact Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Beck with the Sales Activist, and we have a very special episode in store for you today. Today, we're going to be talking with a true sought after thought leader, an expert in a particular space, and that space is online visibility. We're going to talk today a lot about how important it is in today's world to be able to make sure that your name and information is out there in a way that people can find you and get to you as quick as possible because it all ties in together to sales effectiveness, being able to generate new sales. If you don't have opportunities, if you don't have a prospecting engine that's fueling your opportunities to be able to try to close, it makes it very difficult to generate enough new sales. But today we're gonna dig into that we're going to hear the story of the gentleman that kind of built something pretty amazing in the online visibility space, utilizing tools that have been out there for everybody. And more importantly, we're really going to dig into the impact that it can have on people and the types of things that can be accomplished by looking at the details and truly having a servant heart and, and working to make businesses better, adding value wherever you can. You know, he's going to share some great insights and some success stories as to some of the things that he's been able to accomplish with a few of his clients. Just a few snippets of the, of the great many successes that he's had. He's built an international business in his particular field, and it is thriving and growing. It's kind of like a freight train of momentum right now, and it's exciting to talk with him about it. So we're going to be getting into that. But today, before we jump into all of that, I want to talk about whatever mechanism, whatever uh, prospecting engine that you are using, making sure that you're maximizing it and giving yourself enough opportunities to be successful. In sports, they talk about getting enough reps in the work that you're doing uh, or this, the sport that you're playing. You need enough reps or practice at what it is that you do. Well, in sales, it's no different. You need to have opportunities to be able to close clients and bring people in. You need to be able to help enough people to generate the results that you're looking for. And all of that happens by having a truly strong prospecting system or mechanism driving people to you. And today's segment is going to dig into that and more importantly, give you some really keen insights as to the power of these particular tools. So as you're listening to this segment, I want you to absorb and think about all the potential for your business and exactly what it could look like by utilizing some of these skills. This is the Impact Sales Podcast. There's some great stuff coming up with our guest coming up in just a moment. He is a member of Chevrolet's Hall of Fame for his groundbreaking work in online sales. He's an Amazon best-selling contributing author of multiple books. He's a sought-after thought leader and expert in his field. He is the founder and CEO of Darling Local. Coming up to the Impact Sales Podcast, Craig Darling. We'll see you in a minute. Hi, this is Joe Beck with The Sales Activist. Are you an entrepreneur or a sales professional who's struggling to meet and exceed the sales objectives that you have for yourself? Is your calendar for sales appointments a barren wasteland? Are you struggling to get appointments with the right qualified prospects? And more importantly, when you do get appointments with them, are you struggling to win their business and move your sales forward? Well, if this sounds like you, I'd like to help. For well over 30 years and after tens of thousands of live sales interactions and hundreds of millions of dollars of closed sales transactions for the companies that I've worked with and for, I've developed a proprietary sales system to be able to help you not only fill your calendar, but move your sales business forward. It would be my pleasure to help you move those sales forward by conducting a complimentary impact sales strategy session where we're going to talk about what's going on with sales in your business. I'm going to give you some very specific feedback on what you can do that day to move business forward and more than likely help you take major steps forward with your sales success. You can schedule your complimentary impact sales strategy session by texting the word sales to the number 321-421-5213. That's sales to 321-421-5213 or by checking us out on our website at www.thesalesactivist.com. Dot com. You don't have to settle for average sales results. I look forward to talking to you. And we're back with the Impact Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Beck. 
with me in the studio. He's a member of Chevrolet's Hall of Fame for his groundbreaking work in online sales. He's been in internet marketing since 1993. He's Amazon's best-selling contributing author of multiple books. He's a sought-after thought leader and expert in online visibility. He is the founder and CEO of Darling Local. His company is primarily focused on Google business profiles and Google tools, the least expensive, most effective way to be found on the internet today. Please welcome to the Impact Sales Podcast, Craig Darling. Hey, Craig, how are you? Man, I am great. What an opening. Thank you for that. those words. <laughs> You're very welcome. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. I was excited all day about this conversation. You know, you and I have known each other for a while. I knew we were going to have a lot of fun. We were going to dig into some stuff today. Um, so let me start this off. I, I like to start each one of these sections, you know, with a question of all of our guests. And that question is this, how did you first get started in sales? Well, that's actually a really great story. Uh, and I'll tell you, it started out with a Volkswagen Rabbit, no air conditioning, and being in Phoenix was $73 in my pocket, okay? <laughs> so so what, what happened is I came here to take a teaching position. Uh, I'm a music education guy. And uh, when I got here to Arizona, I was all ready to go to work. I came here to Arizona, I rented a, a, a kitchenette studio uh, motel, right? They didn't have studio apartments back then, really. Uh, so uh, I rented out. I paid, uh, you know, for a couple of months and uh, I went down for my first job interview and she said, hey, you'd be great, except you have to uh, do your student teaching because Arizona doesn't recognize California certificates. And I was totally unaware of that. And I was like panicking because now I didn't have a job. And like I said, I had less than $75 in my pocket. So I did the old fashioned thing. I stopped at a Circle K on my way out of there back to my kitchenette motel down on Grand Avenue in uh, Phoenix. And uh, I opened up the help wanted section. I went down and I saw a line that says, uh, uh, guaranteed $250 a week to come learn how to sell cars. And I go, great, I can go work there for two weeks. I got enough money to go home. I don't have to call dad and tell him I'm broke. <laughs> so, and uh, actually that started everything for us. Uh, uh, I actually uh, met my wife of 34 years on the uh, on the steps of that dealership. Uh, so <laughs> it's all it's all been a good thing. Wow! So you could actually say that that little requirement of the student teaching not being accepted in Arizona kind of changed the whole trajectory of your life, didn't it? It did. It changed the trajectory. Otherwise, uh, honestly, otherwise I'd have been back in California, sitting on the beach, my toes in the sand, and watching the girls and been surfing now and then. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So obviously a lot has happened since then. And one of the things I always like to talk about, you know, we go through some of the accomplishments of our guests and, you know, being a member of the Chevrolet Hall of Fame, I know is kind of rarefied air for anybody that's in the automobile space. So tell me a little bit about that. I know your kind of gateway to that was online sales, which when you first got started was relatively new out there. So tell me a little bit about that journey. I'm sure that was a, an interesting story. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have uh, email marketing. We didn't have CRMs. We didn't uh, really have uh, the, what we consider websites today. And, and of course we had uh, dial up connection to the internet. Uh, but the reality was in 1996, uh, all of these things came together. And in 1996, I was the number one truck salesperson in the country simultaneously being the number one passenger car salesperson in the country. Simultaneous to that, I was the number one Corvette salesperson in the world. And at the same time, I was the number one commercial salesperson. And the reason I got inducted is no one had ever hit all four of those benchmarks in the same year. Yeah, it's kind of like the grand slam of the automobile industry. I'm sure it doesn't happen, or if it's even happened again since. I, I don't know wow. one way or the other. I, I no longer work for Chevrolet, but uh, uh, they were really happy for with me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And that's obviously impressive. Yeah, well, it, it actually started out at actually a different phase of my career because uh, the first thing that happened after that was uh, 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 a talent agency out of San Francisco called Peak Performance uh, picked me up and started scheduling uh, uh, you know, uh, speeches for me, speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. They wanted to hear how you did what you did. 
Right. Right. <laughs> That's great. So one of the things, and, and I think this is so important, especially in today's day and age, and I want to get into the, the core of your strengths, you know, visibility is so important in today's world. You know, people can get more options from their smartphone now than they ever thought would be possible. And, and in a lot of ways, value has become commoditized because it's so easy to find information. And I know you've done some really what I call groundbreaking work in the idea of online visibility and, and how you are seen more using Google tools. Tell me a little bit about how that came about, because I know that was a leap, but now it's kind of everywhere. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Well, a number of years ago in 2014, uh, those of us that were studying uh, marketing on the web at the time uh, were cognizant of the fact that Google released uh, what they called the Pigeon Algorithm Update. And uh, most marketers just let it go right over the head. That's oh, another update from Google, et cetera. Uh, but I was really fascinated with it because I, I read the, uh, uh, the specs on it, and it was actually a, a mechanism to gather social media signals for search. And uh, that kind of surprised me because Google wasn't really doing the social media thing. Yeah, they had Google Plus, and yeah, I had a few clients for it, but, but it really wasn't uh, uh, their benchmark, their hallmark, if you will, with social media. But then uh, I realized that the uh, the they can about four days later they launched uh, what they called Google Places, and that was the first iteration of Google Business Profiles today. Uh, but at any rate, I realized that it, it is in fact a social media panel, and uh, to that end, we started playing around with it, and we discovered that uh, uh, we could make a post of content and deliver it on a Google tool. And there are about 240 Google tools for indexing. But when you deliver the content on that Google tool, it indexes instantly. Now, I found out by mistake that this happened. It was totally accidental. But uh, it, didn't, it wasn't accidental that I realized that, wait a minute, I've got a Google console that will, optimize, will uh, index my website in four weeks or four hours or four months, depending on how Google's bots feel about me. Or I can utilize Google tools and I can index my content in a matter of milliseconds. So uh, to that end, we started working with the Google profile more and more. And, and now we're, uh, we've uh, fulfilled for over 500 clients worldwide. Wow, that's great. And for all of you tech heads out there that don't read the specs, this is an example of why it's so important that you really look at what something is and try to truly understand it. That's a great story, Craig, because you saw something earlier than what a lot of people may, may have seen it. And it was because you dug into it, you did the research, you sought to understand what it all meant. And obviously it's had a huge impact. And, and I want to, I want to pivot to the idea of impact. We talk a lot about that. It's the name, the impact sales podcast, but impact is kind of like, you know, what it does to the people that you're working with, what what do they receive? Value is kind of expected, but impact is, you know, the life altering things that it can do. And I know you've achieved some great success with many of the clients that you worked with. Tell me about some of the impact that your services have had on some of the clients that you've worked okay, with. Okay, uh, so this one is is probably a great story for that uh, little furniture company in Chandler, Arizona. Right, no big marketing budget, four salespeople. Uh, you know, a couple of million dollars worth of inventory, uh, but but not a big company. They need to make sales, right? We all know about sales. They need to make sales in order to keep, you know, keep things going, keep the lights on and the air conditioning going, especially this time of year, right? And, uh, I, and Nathan came to me. He goes, well, we're struggling. I don't know what to do. And uh, we looked at uh, the overall market here. And there is a, a furniture company. I won't say their name, but a big furniture company we all know of. It was spending about $100,000 a week. And I said, you know, Nate, what we can do is we can take that furniture company and, and we can take all of their keywords, including their name, and use it uh, to drive your Google business profile. Because that's what you do with the profiles. You create relevance. And uh, he said, well, whatever you want to do, you just get, you know, you get carte blanche. So uh, I, took, I took the name of this company that was spending $100,000 uh, uh, a, a week on marketing and probably a little bit more than that, actually. And, uh, and a month later, a uh, little furniture store in Chandler, Arizona, got 4.9 million clicks. 
So uh, if you don't think that could turn something around, all right. Now that might be my biggest success story because I've never had anything get 4.9 million clicks in 28 days since. But uh, uh, but that's just an idea of, of of the kind of impact that being the top search result uh, can have. You know, in, in a in a city the size of Phoenix, right? So. Uh, yeah, so that's it. But uh, but even so, I've got another. I've got a chain of dealerships uh, that we're spending each individual store. There's uh, eleven stores in the chain. Uh, each individual store is about spending about fifty five, sixty thousand dollars a month on digital marketing. So since they brought in my process, they are none of them spending anywhere near that much money. In fact, they're all spending about a tenth of that a month now, and uh, and and they're uh, three of the stores are the top stores in the country in their brand and two other stores are the top in the zone. So uh, the other stores are all around there, right? But there's a lot of competition in the automobile business. So uh, we're not really concerned about it. But what I am pleased to tell you is that I have been, they, they don't even wait to uh, have their account run out. They call me and renew automatically, right? So so, so I like that. And they've been clients for uh, going on six years now. Wow. They don't want any con uh, discontinuation of service. They want to make sure that that keeps running. Yeah. Their, their phones are ringing. Their phones are ringing a couple thousand times a month. Who, who doesn't want that? Absolutely. Something that you said that just made me think of something. Um, and, and us guys that have been around a little while, you know, we, we recognize this, you know, there, there was a big trend before online business was as strong as what it was where, individual physical businesses would pay very close attention to traffic counts of how much traffic was going on in their area, right? And it was very important when they would see a flagship type business, a big business invest in an area because they knew traffic counts would be impacted. And what you described with that furniture store is basically a new age version of that, of that same tactic where you're capitalizing on traffic counts. You're referencing referencing their traffic counts online, tagging along, and and recognizing huge improvement. And that's that's you know such a powerful statement as it relates to how any size business can be competitive and relevant and visible when they know the right tools. So it's a great story. Yeah, there, there's another story that's that's similar that also highlights that. And I wouldn't have realized it if my wife hadn't pointed it out to me. And this is a, the true story. So uh, <laughs> the best ideas always come from our wives. <laughs> there's a strip mall uh, about uh, a quarter of a mile from me. And one of my first clients back in the day was, was one of the proprietors in that strip mall. And uh, uh, so he hired me and the strip mall was basically vacant. Everybody was not doing anything. It was just, it was always, Always plenty of parking. Let's just put it that way. So they uh, they actually uh, they hired me. Their their marketing was there was was non-existent except for the Google panel. And the next thing you know, the store is uh, growing. They've got a line of customers almost every day. What happened after that is the dance studio, the haircutting place, the barber, the pizza place, all of those places started getting business because there was so much traffic going into the original. Next thing you know, it's hard to find a parking space in that strip mall. Okay. So that's, that's the upside. The guy that owned the shop, he sold it for a good chunk of money because look at all the business he had and the new owners, they didn't were interested in what I had to do. Okay. So now let's go three years fast forward. That store is gone. And the strip mall is almost vacant again, right? It's just so that's some serious impact. And it impacted the people that wait tables in the in the pizza joint. It, index, it, it, it attacked the people that, that uh, were the dance teachers. Uh, the, the little guitar shop that was there that gave guitar lessons is gone now. I mean, all of this stuff was like really starting to blossom. And then we lost the one account out of there. So it's like losing the anchor store in a mall, right? Yeah. Wow. And and it's very true. You're right. I mean, people will recognize, you know, and we talk a lot about sales, but you know, in sales, you have to have opportunities. Like you have to, you either create them, source them somehow, or come up with a, a, a system or a process to generate those opportunities for you. And you're, 
you're providing what is probably one of the most ideal opportunities for people economically to increase traffic count opportunities for their business. Now, I know your business has changed over the years because, you know, I know at the beginning you were doing a lot of this exclusively for people. And then you kind of started doing some different things. You started also coaching other people on how to do this. Can you tell us a little bit about the facets of your yeah, business? Sure. So, so first off, uh, what I do and what you've known that I do is now our feeder program. Okay. So I take in specific clients, uh, uh, and I, I work with their Google profiles and I try and see if it's a vertical, uh, that we can capitalize on. Uh, basically what that means is we look at it, we see, can we generate enough business so that it is an exceptional ROI for this particular person? So the people that we bring into this feeder program, they get a really smoking deal uh, on the service, right? Uh, but one of the things that we do is we offer, uh, uh, if we if you don't feel like the ROI is good for our services, uh, we give you the second year for free, okay? And we don't have a, we don't put a marker in there and say, well, this is what it's going to do. No, if you don't feel like it's a good ROI, the next year is free. I'm not going to argue with you about it, okay? But at any rate, so we bring people into this feeder and what works, like, let's say, so now we're building a vertical with another company that's all lawyers. And we're building another one that's all home service companies, home improvement companies. And we're building another one that just sells kitchens, right? So these verticals are growing because they came into the feeder system and we saw that that was a workable vertical. And here you go. Okay. So uh, our systems are completely uh, automated. Uh, our proprietary services are second to none, and P and there are, is nobody else out there that has the visibility regimen th that we utilize to make those numbers I'm talking about. So the, that's that's one side of it. So then we uh, uh, a couple of years ago, I decided to, to uh, I was talked into coaching somebody. So I said, look, I said if you want to build an agency like mine, I'll take a dozen people in, and uh, I couldn't believe it in less than two hours. I had a dozen clients uh, for my coaching class. And the idea behind that was to generate an agency like mine that could, uh, uh, to build an agency like mine rather, that would generate a quarter million dollars in sales in the first year. And uh, uh, we had, uh, I think 20 people came into the class, uh, 11 of them hit that goal, right? So that's that's fabulous. So so what happened is I told all of these people when we were doing it, I go, I don't have any of this stuff built. You guys are going to have to bear with me. I'm going to teach it. We're going to fly by the seat of our pants. And when I come into the next iteration, you'll be grandfathered in, right? So so this just last June, uh, we were at the end of the year and uh, we actually had the, the graduation ceremony while I was in Hawaii. <laughs> So that was actually another story. It's a lot of fun, but, but at uh, any rate, uh, we started a whole new class. Uh, again, we've got 25 people, the people that went our, were in our last class, they have paid to stay in the program. Okay. And uh, now the program is only instead of being a year, the program is 90 days. And the idea is to uh, build a company for everything from, from establishing your corporate name and getting your tax ID number to installing a website, to uh, creating Google business profiles for, for your kind of businesses, helping them prospect, helping them close deals, all of that. And, uh, uh, and that's well underway now. Uh, and we have, uh, I think we have 35 people waiting in the wings to join, right? So, uh, and we give them all everything they need. We give them the, the website and the sales tools. And the only thing we can't do is we can't fill out the IRS forms for them and and some of their banking, right? They got to do all of that, right? But everything else is is uh, is all pretty much done. We show them how to generate the content. Uh, we give them we light we actually license the automo automotion uh, automation rather and the websites to them uh, because it is it is my uh, technology. Uh, but uh, we license it to them. It doesn't cost them anything to utilize the product. They just can't go outside of our uh, directory. So it's a kind of a modern day franchise, if you will. So, uh, yep. I'll tell you what, that's, that's such an, a, an impressive story. And I think what's most impressive about it, not the building of what you've done, which I know is impressive in and of itself, but it's the true impact that it's having on the number of people. You know, you think of the ripple effect of these additional agencies now out there providing these type quality services to businesses that are getting 
results, you know, not even just a fraction of the types of results that you've generated yourself for other people, how many lives are being changed, how many jobs are being created, how many people are getting services that they wouldn't have probably gotten because maybe they weren't seen in, in the previous way that they did business. So it must feel really good knowing that you're impacting that many people. Well, I'm really, I'm really cognizant about my community, right? So uh, uh, I look at what I can do to improve my community. And if I'm helping other people improve the community and the people around them, then, uh, uh, you know, as they say, uh, uh, you know, that that's what we're all supposed to be here for is to make each other's lives better. In my opinion, anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And the one thing too, that I think is important and I'm, and I'm going to share just a small snippet of, of the brief conversation we had the other day where you had mentioned that there's been some, some new systems that you've built into your own business. And, and this is one of those things that I always like to share with people when it, and it becomes evident, you know, you've been able to, to take back some of your time in your schedule as an entrepreneur, because you've built some very productive systems, maybe without getting into the details, we don't want you to give away any secret sauce, but, you know, tell me a little bit about that process. Cause I know entrepreneurs and sales professionals love hearing about how you achieve a certain level of success. And then you systematize yeah, well, it. In all, in all seriousness, I had to buy a software company in order to facilitate that. Right. <laughs> Which I did. That's okay. It's that's another way of doing it. You, you write a check. Yeah, that too. But uh, but what it did is it allowed me the, uh, the technology at my fingertips uh, to develop uh, uh, these uh, uh, automation routines uh, that were totally my idea. And I really didn't want to. I didn't want to pay like we have a mutual friend to develop software, for example. I didn't want to give him sixty grand to develop my idea. I wanted to actually do it myself, right? So uh, so that that's what I've done, and I, I actually have a. Instead of hiring people uh, to help me develop the software, okay, I've actually partnered with them. Okay, I bring them into my company, right, as a COO or treasurer or whatever. But you know, I give them an equity piece of my company for doing what they're doing. And uh, I tell you what, Joe, that's paid off in spades. It, it really has. Uh, 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 so to, to answer your initial query, uh, just we we just rolled out one piece of some of the technology that we're developing and that's put an eight hour eight hours a week back into my my schedule that i didn't have and the next one we're rolling out in fact it's going to start rolling out next week yeah next on next wednesday um that'll save uh usually if you've ever heard me say tuesdays is my busiest day that's because i'm up at 4 30 for a, a networking meeting in, in uh in Tampa or, or what have you, and I'm done at five o'clock at night. Well, all of my online work that day is being taken over by a robot title, right? So, so or whatever you want to call it, technology, automation, but it's a robot. <laughs> That's great though. I'll tell you what, you know, it. The, the more you move forward and the more you recognize how you build a better mousetrap, really, you know, it, it helps to continue the, the development of any business. I think, I think it's hard for entrepreneurs, especially to maintain the same level of work commitment, the harder and longer it goes, because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a grind, right? So if you find ways of systematizing it and making it easier, whether it's through acquisition or whether it's through partnering, it, it's just another example of how there are so many different solutions to problems. You just need to dig into those things and how to do it. Now, I know firsthand as a, a as a friend, associate, and client of of Darling Local, I understand the impact of the the products and the services that you have. The one thing that I think that's always stood out in my eyes about you, Craig, is you've attained this level of trusted advisor status with the clients that you work with. Like you are the go to guy for things in your space, and I know this personally because that's how I look at you as well. But but tell me a little bit about that journey because that's a game changer for entrepreneurs or sales professionals. Like getting to that status. Tell me some of the things that you've done to get there. Oh man. <laughs> Works my ass off. <laughs> I don't need them all. I know it's a long list, but just a few of the a few of the ideas that that position you. Number 1 is uh, I never uh, I never locked out any ideas. Okay? Uh 
you know, maybe we beat some ideas like a dead horse, but, uh, uh, but, but we, we are, we're really open uh, to ideas and bringing younger people into my team has, has accelerated uh, the, uh, the proliferation of ideas. Okay? And, and ideas are where it's at. Uh, the other side of the coin is, is that uh, I actually uh, have a, a handful of clients, the new clients I was telling you about the feeder program. That I actually manage them myself, and I look at every specific aspect of it. It's, a, it's all manual. It's it's actually really really tedious work sometimes, uh, but I analyze each and every one of the data points uh, at, at the end of the day. And then for all of my clients, and I have quite a number of them, I actually built a dashboard uh, that would analyze all of the data points for all of my clients. And uh, the, the more clients I have the finer that data point is and allows me to share legitimate information. So I, uh, I talk with people all the time and they go, well, I didn't know that. And I go, okay, well, that's the way it is. I'm sorry you don't know it, but if you listen to me, you know it now, <laughs> but, but, but how did I get here? I, I just, just hard work. And, uh, you know, I read a book by Scott Alexander years ago. Maybe you read it. It's called Renata Success. Okay. And and all it is is about oh it, all it is about putting your nose down and charging, having thick skin so the arrows and the missiles just bounce right off, and follow your horn so you chase down your your target right, and that that's what a rhinoceros does, and that's kind of what I've always done. It didn't matter whether I was trying to be the number one car salesman in the world or or trying to run the largest Google business agency in the world, uh, and both of them, by the way, have come to pass. So. Yep, that's great. The one thing too, and I and I want to add on to that point, and again because it's top of mind. The one thing that I've, I've appreciated about working with you, Craig, and and your organization, you know, the the little things that you do that position you as that trusted advisor. And and a prime example was just the other day you you reached out to me personally, and there wasn't any direct business involved in this conversation, but it was, hey, were you aware that you can do this? I noticed. I looked at your profile. And I noticed that you could do this and here's how you would do it. And, and I know you've probably made thousands of phone calls like that, but it's little things like that, that make a huge difference in the eyes of your prospects and your clients, because you're adding extra value and impacting them in a way that not a lot of people do nowadays. A lot of people are, they're locked into that automation and the personal touch has kind of gone by the wayside, but I've noticed that with you. That's been a, a true piece of the way you operate. Well, there's a uh, uh, there's a quote, and I, it's anonymous because I can't remember who quoted it to me, but I've carried it with me for years, and it's like this. And you you said part of it. It's the little things you do that you don't need to do that make the difference when you can't do anything else about it, right? <laughs> Very true. Wow, that's a great way of putting it. Craig, this has been, this has been great. I, I like to, w with all of our guests, I also like to get a sense of, from your perspective of the things that you've accomplished, if you had to start all over, if you had to kind of start all over and build something again from scratch, what would be the one or two things that you would really focus on, you know, tied to sales, but in general, what would you really focus on to, to build to start over? Well, the first thing that I would do is I would uh, start out not trying to be the hard sell, okay? Uh, I learned, it took me a long time to realize that, that selling isn't actually selling. It's uh, uh, it's the art of simple persuasion, right? And uh, I, uh, I can't tell you how many times I tried to make a sale when it wasn't appropriate. And so if I had to start all over again, I wouldn't miss those opportunities by trying to push myself on something. So, uh, so there's that. Uh, the other thing is, is, is if I had to start, uh, I didn't realize until just a few years ago, how important, how impactful uh, networking is, right? Uh, being part of various business forums. And the first time I had one-on-ones, for example, I was uh, trying to make a sale. I didn't realize I was trying to figure out how to help the person I was meeting with. And as soon as I discovered that helping others is the key, right, uh, all of a sudden my company went from being a local company trying to scrounge for a couple of dollars here and there 
to be in the global phenomenon that it's become in the last three years. That's great. And you are global. I know you have quite a few international clients uh, helping them with their profiles. So Craig, this this has been great. I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us. This has been a true pleasure. My guest today has been Craig Darling from Darling Local talking about the importance of online visibility and all the different things that you can do using Google tools. This has been a, a great segment, Craig. And I like to wrap up each one of these segments with a simple statement. And that statement is this, sell better and impact the world. Thanks for joining us. Hi, this is Joe Beck with The Sales Activist. Are you struggling to fill your calendar with qualified sales appointments? And more importantly, when you get your calendar full, are you struggling to win new business for yourself or for your company? Well, if this is you, I'd like to help. For well over 30 years, and after tens of thousands of live sales interactions, and hundreds of millions of dollars of closed sales transactions with the companies that I've worked with and for, I've developed a proprietary sales mastery system to help you move your business forward in a big way. Over the years, I've had the great honor of working with over 3,500 entrepreneurs and sales professionals in the development of their business, and I would like to do the same for you. If you're struggling with sales, you're not alone. It's not uncommon at all for entrepreneurs or sales professionals to go through dry spells and to struggle with sales in their business. But we can turn all that around with a complimentary impact sales mastery session where I will get on the phone with you. We'll talk literally about what's going on with sales in your business. And more importantly, I'll give you some immediate actionable steps to take to move sales forward in your business. You can schedule your complimentary sales strategy session by texting the word sales to the number 321-421-5213. That's sales to 321-421-5213. Or by reaching us on our website at www.thesalesactivist.com. I look forward to talking to you soon.